Hey guys, so today's video is going to be all about what to do if you can't find that first job into cybersecurity. So I've been getting a lot of comments about this, whether you've graduated from bootcamp, whether you've graduated with your associates or your bachelor's degree, it may still be hard to get that first job out of college or out of a bootcamp, and it really all depends on your personal circumstances. And in this video, I'm going to be covering a bunch of different things and areas that you can improve on so that you can get your foot in the door for that first ever cybersecurity job or internship. All right, so the first tip and probably the most creative tip in this list is to help a nonprofit or a small business create their cybersecurity plan or strategy. And I know that sounds like me telling you to get a job when you can't get a job. So I wanna clarify here that this is going to be a volunteer experience. Now I know that while you're looking for a job and on the job hunt, you want to spend like every waking hour, all your time applying to jobs, preparing for interviews, prepping your resume, but honestly, one of the most important things is real world hands-on experience. And in the beginning, this could look like volunteering. This could look like working for free for a nonprofit. This could look like reaching out to a small business that you know of and saying, hey, I noticed you have a website, but I noticed it's not very secure. Would it be possible if I helped you work on this? And you'll basically pitch a small business security strategy to them. And I guarantee you, this is something most small businesses and nonprofits aren't really thinking about. And because you're helping them work on this for free, there's really no reason for them to reject you. Obviously, if they're dealing with confidential data, that may be something else, but you could just start with something high level in terms of website security, um, what type of encryption they're using, are their routers configured properly? If they have Wi-Fi set up or some wireless connection for their customers or for their clients. And trust me, I am someone who 100% does not believe in unpaid internships, unpaid jobs. But as someone who didn't have any experience, when I was first starting out in tech roles, I started out by volunteering and basically proving to myself and to people who see my resume that I have something on my resume. It could be a cybersecurity project that you list it as, or you could just call it relevant experience as long as you don't state that you're you know, an employee of that company or that small business. But I honestly feel like a lot of companies will also see that and think, wow, this person, this person is volunteering to do this work that a lot of companies are willing to pay money for and do pay money for. So if you're someone who is lacking some, some real world hands-on experience in cybersecurity projects, then I definitely think this is one of the most viable options to go with. And it can also be something really fun. And who knows, maybe if you get really good at it, you could create your own IT or cybersecurity consulting business. And that could be you know, your very own side hustle in cybersecurity. So there's so many ways that this could go, but obviously the number one reason you're doing this, if you're looking for a job in cybersecurity, is to beef up your resume to show you have real world experience that isn't just, that isn't just a cybersecurity project or a hack the box. It's real world work that you actually did for someone, their small business or their nonprofit. Okay, so let's say you're the person that applies to hundreds, maybe even thousands of job applications in cybersecurity that are entry level, but you still can't seem to get that interview. You just can't get that first interview. That honestly does get to you. You know, you send out hundreds of applications and you hear crickets back and it really gets frustrating and demoralizing because after you're spending a few weeks, a few months, sending out applications and hearing nothing, it really just kind of makes you want to give up. So one tip I have for you, if you're in this bucket, is go out and look for the top 10 roles that you are most interested in. These could be different companies, different different types of roles, SOC analysts, incident response, cyber intelligence, cybersecurity analysts, anything that you're interested in that is also within your experience levels. But basically you're gonna go into those applications, look through the actual requirements that the job lists out. For example, if one of them lists out Burp Suite, Metasploit, and map Wireshark, and you're basically applying for a junior pen tester role from based on those skills. And if you're a resume, even if you graduated from a cybersecurity bootcamp, even if you graduated with a bachelor's in cybersecurity, if you don't have those key skills that the company says are required or preferred on that job description, then you're probably going to get filtered out before a person even looks at your resume. Because when you're entry level, most of your resumes look very generalist. Any projects that you might have from boot camps or classes, those are very broad cybersecurity. Based on that example, if you're applying to a junior pen tester role and you don't have any of the skills listed that the job requires, but another applicant has just one or two of those tools listed, then guess who's gonna get the interview? And it's probably gonna be that second person. Okay, so how do you add those onto your resume? Basically, my mentality around this is that people know that you're entry level. They don't expect you to know everything. I know a lot of people who are afraid to put tools and skills on their resume because they don't want to get asked questions on them during an interview. But still, going back to my key point, people know that you're entry level. 
you could write Burp Suite on your resume and still feel like a beginner using Burp Suite. Unless you're applying for a software engineering role at Google and you put down Python, then they probably assume that you're at least intermediate using Python, you know? But for entry level roles in a normal cybersecurity job in a normal company that isn't, you know, Fang or, or a really big cybersecurity consulting firm, you're most likely going to be asked the basics of the tool and how you've used it in previous experiences. So let's say you do see Burp Suite or Nmap on the list of required or preferred qualifications. If you haven't used those tools before, just do a quick YouTube search, watch like a 30 minute, one hour tutorial and download it. There's usually free editions. Burp Suite has a community edition and Nmap is open source so anyone can use it. And most cybersecurity tools are either open source or they have some kind of community edition or a or a freemium where you can use a bit for free and then pay for you know more advanced features but you probably won't need to pay for advanced features if you're a beginner and if you don't want to use burp suite there's also similar tools that are open source like zap or the z attack proxy and these are all viable options to put on your resume to at least get through to a recruiter and honestly it takes a long time to apply for jobs so you don't want to spend all that time applying for a job and then just getting filtered out by the algorithm that is just looking for specific keywords like Wireshark or Burp Suite, you know? That is not something you want to waste your time doing. So you're basically catering your resume towards the individual job that you're applying for. And it makes it a lot easier when you know what you want to do. For example, if you want to go into junior pen testing, then you really only need to keep those core cybersecurity pen testing tools on there and you don't have to change it for every single job application. And that'll make it a lot easier, but it'll still make your resume stand out because you're catering your resume towards the skills that specifically the job or the employer is looking for. And that way, at least it will get into the hands of a recruiter, hopefully, and not just the algorithm that is sifting through thousands of resumes and yours can easily get filtered out if you don't have those keywords. All right, so the next thing is to join B-Sides or cybersecurity meetups. So do not underestimate the power of networking. I know that I've said this in previous videos, even as someone who is an introvert, it's important to get yourself out there and introduce yourself to people, especially when it comes to networking to find a job. So B-Sides are basically meetups for cybersecurity and they're very similar to cybersecurity conferences, but they are more local. So there may be a B-Side community in New York, in Houston. There's basically B-Sides in a bunch of different major cities and they plan different conferences, events, community talks, and, and I think also capture the flags or hacking events, depending on how big the community is. And a great thing about these B-Sides and cybersecurity meetups is that you know, in the post pandemic world, a lot of these are hosted online. So you don't have to be in New York to be able to join a B-Side call in New York. You could be anywhere as long as you have a Wi-Fi connection and the interest to participate in one of these events. And I'm not saying to join these events and then the first person you meet, ask them for a job. Like that is obviously not what I'm saying, but I do think that it's important to put yourself out there. You can let them know, hey, I just graduated from a bootcamp. I just graduated from college. I am switching careers and I'm looking to get into cybersecurity. And for my first role, I am really interested in an SOC analyst role. For anyone that you connect with, have a one-on-one -on -one with, ask for mentorship, basically talk to them about how they got to where they are. You'd be surprised how many people have struggled to get that first job in any field in technology. And it really just takes someone to take a chance on you and to refer you for a job, connect you with someone who could give you a job, connect you with someone who could refer you for a specific role that you're interested in, or maybe introduce you to a role in cybersecurity that you've never even heard of and might just be right up your alley. So what's important is really to keep an open dialogue and an open conversation and to put it out there that you are looking for a job in this specific field, in this specific role, and these are your specific skills that you have and what you can bring to the table in terms of value for a company or value for a team. Okay, so this next piece of advice I have for you guys is actually based on my previous videos that I've made on free cybersecurity training and courses that you can get online to put on your resume to really make it look a lot more appealing than other candidates that are applying to the same jobs. Because let's face it, when you're in an entry level or applying for an entry level role, it really is kind of like a funnel. So let's say all the entry level roles are here and there's basically thousands, hundreds of thousands of people trying to apply for these entry level roles. Just because a lot more people are getting more interested in cybersecurity, a lot more people are doing cybersecurity boot camps, and a lot more universities are creating cybersecurity bachelor's degrees, which honestly may not even have existed five, 10 years ago. 
So I know, so I know there's a statistic about more and more cybersecurity jobs being created in the field. However, there's definitely a misbalance of jobs being created for entry level versus specialized and experienced cybersecurity jobs. So yes, there are more cybersecurity jobs being created, but the key thing here is there may not be as many cybersecurity entry level jobs that are being created compared to the huge list of experienced cybersecurity specialized jobs. So that's why really understanding who you're going up against in terms of a job search is really important and that's why everything every little thing that you do to make your resume stand out a little more than someone else's really does help for example if two candidates both graduated from a boot camp program and they're both decent boot camp programs and by the way i will be making a a video on the top 10 cybersecurity boot camps out there so definitely keep an eye on that video when it comes out but yeah let's say you and this other person have basically the same resume and the same set of tools and skills and experience but let's say you completed the free intro to cybersecurity course at stanford and again, that is free. So there's really nothing stopping anyone from taking that course. And when a recruiter sees these two resumes and one of them says that they completed an intro to cybersecurity course at Stanford and the other one didn't, who do you think the recruiter is gonna choose, you know? Because recruiters, if you think about it logically, recruiters have a quota to meet. They want to spend as much time as possible on the candidates that they think that they believe can make it past a interview, that they believe will actually get hired by the hiring manager. And if there's a better person that they can talk to, they're going to talk to that person versus someone else whose resume doesn't look as good as, as their ideal candidate. So you really have to think about job applications in that way. And beefing up your resume with these free courses really proves that you're someone who is taking their cybersecurity career seriously and you're willing to do the extra work that most people aren't doing, honestly. And those little things can be the differences between, between you getting a call for that first interview versus never hearing back at all. And I will share the link of the video I made on those free cybersecurity resources, as well as my video on how to get started in cybersecurity in 2022, which has more tips on getting started in cybersecurity and getting that foundational experience that you might need in different cybersecurity jobs. Okay, so let's say after all this, your resume looks great. You're still having trouble somehow finding a job or getting an interview even in these entry-level cybersecurity roles. But at this point, if you followed all these tips, you basically already have the hands-on experience by volunteering with a small business. You basically have the technical skills for the job because you catered your resume specifically for the job. You learned the tools specifically for the job that you're applying for. You also have the extra education on top of your bootcamp or your bachelor's degree because you're taking those free online courses in cybersecurity. Let's say you added the intro to cybersecurity course from Stanford, and you also have the community part of your resume done, which is the B-sides, the cybersecurity meetups, and you know, just getting involved with some cybersecurity community out there. And that's basically the four pillars already of a resume, you know, those are the main core things. And of course, I'm not going to go into actual interview tips or interview prep in this video, but I do have a video I previously made on cybersecurity interview preps, if that is your issue. And I probably will be remaking that video to make it a bit more relevant for 2022. But yeah, I will link that video down below if you guys want to check that out after this one. Okay, so basically this is the last step, or at least it should be the last step, the nail in the coffin, and that is to create your own cybersecurity tutorial blog or cybersecurity intelligence feed. Okay, so for those of you who may not be familiar, if you guys have studied any cybersecurity concepts, have Googled what is the CIA triad, Google will basically then list a whole bunch of different articles. And sometimes those articles are personal blogs that an actual individual has written around a specific topic. For example, there's a lot of these when it comes to capture the flags, hack the box, try hack me challenges, and people will basically do these challenges and then basically write up a little tutorial walkthrough of all their steps, the tools they used, everything they did, and it's basically for anyone to see and read. Okay, so that's one option for the walkthrough slash slash tutorial blog that you could write, or there's more informational articles that you can write. For example, if Burp Suite came out with a new edition and there's new features in it, and maybe you did a whole bunch of research because you wanted to learn more about the tool and its new capabilities, then maybe you can write up a blog post about the new features, how they can be used, how it benefits pen testers and hackers around the world, or maybe there's specific cybersecurity concepts that you're really interested in and, and you basically do a whole bunch of research and you can do a quick mini write-up about what you learned and put that on your blog. And then the third option is a cybersecurity news feed. So just buy a new Hacker News article, you know, every few minutes, every hour, and there's always something happening in cybersecurity, whether it's nation state hacks, whether it's smaller companies being hacked, whether it's a breach or ransomware attack, there's so many things going on. And 
and you might be someone who's really interested in cybersecurity intelligence or cyber threat intelligence. So let's say you're already reading these articles anyway, you might as well do like a daily recap maybe of the different news articles that you read or maybe listen to podcasts and then you take some of that information and, and then the most interesting things that you hear on the podcast, maybe you can look into it a bit more, do some more research and then write out your own version of that story that that might make more sense to someone who is a beginner. But there's something that you're doing to make your articles more unique. So any of these three things, obviously you can write about more than any of these. Um, these are just kind of the main three things I had thought of in terms of cybersecurity blogs that someone could start for free. And you can start these for free again. I, I don't know if I mentioned that, but, but yeah, you could use Square, Squarespace, Wix or a WordPress blog. There's so many different options and you know, it doesn't matter if you only get a handful of views. What's important is that you wrote these articles in your own time on your own accord because you are interested in these cybersecurity topics. So that proves to a recruiter that you're interested in cybersecurity enough to do this in your free time, to do this as a fun side project or basically like a hobby for you. And it doesn't have to be anything too extravagant or special. Most sites like WordPress can, can make a really professional looking website in just, you know, five minutes, but there's essentially no technical barrier to make these sites for free. And I personally use Square for my digital products as well. And Square is also free to use to create a website because there's so many options out there and you don't have to pay money for these things. I mean, you could obviously if you want to get a premium account or premium features. Okay, so I've really rambled a lot in this video. I still have one more thing I wanted to touch on, but I'm gonna touch on it really briefly because I talked about it in my previous video on getting started in cybersecurity. And this one is really just on top of the networking that you might do in a B-side or a meetup. And that is second tier connections and LinkedIn. Obviously LinkedIn is on this list, but I've talked about my LinkedIn strategy on other videos. So I'm not gonna go into this and make it like a 20 minute video. But second tier network engagement is really important because there's a statistic out there that your second tier network and second tier network is really just the people who are close to you and then the people they know. So the people they know are usually the ones that actually bring opportunity, bring business, bring new ideas. They're usually the ones to more successfully give you a referral or find you a new job or connect you with someone. And that might be surprising to some of you because you may have told all of your close friends that you're looking for a job in cybersecurity, but your first degree contacts may not always be the best to connect you with a new job. So if you're on LinkedIn and you look at the list of second degree connections that you have, and seeing which one of those are cybersecurity professionals in roles that you may be interested in, then that is somewhere to start. And you could also tell your first degree contacts and connect with their networks about potential cybersecurity jobs that you might be able to apply for. So yeah. Okay, so hopefully after using all these tips in this video, I hope you can at least get that first interview, that first job, that first referral. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday and Sundays at 12 p.m. And let me know in the comments below if there's any questions that you guys might have or any video topics that you might want to see from me. And thank you guys so much for 11K subscribers. I could not be here without you, literally. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate all of your support and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.